Hey guys, I'm Tim with Bleepin' Jeep. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a one year review of my green Jeep and all the aftermarket parts on it. It's already been a year since I built it. I've made a few small changes in that time, which I'll touch on also. But basically in this video, we are just gonna be taking a look at the aftermarket parts that have been on there for a year, see which ones have held up and which ones haven't and which ones are worth your money. Let's get to it. fortunate enough to live about 30 minutes, a 30 minute drive from where I just parked the Jeep. This is one of my favorite spots. I do some shooting up here and some camping up here and uh, amongst uh, my friends we've we've named this spot the campsite and we can set targets out there on the hillside. It's probably about I'd say about 150 yards to that that last rock and uh, Misty likes it up here partic particularly when she's chasing lizards and uh, anyway it's just a great place. But let's start on the Jeep, and uh, before we look at any aftermarket parts, let's check out some of the custom stuff, uh, starting with the top here, this roof rail, roof rack, whatever you want to call it. I made these. I get a lot of questions on it, nonstop questions, and uh, I'm sure somewhere I have some pictures of when I made it. It's uh, some one and a quarter tube, probably 095, maybe thinner, and it, it works fine. Uh, a customer of Greg's at Rock and Road had these heavy-duty Yakima bars. They are actually underneath this rubber coating. They are quarter wall DOM. So these are probably about an inch around. Really thick, really heavy duty. And like on most things I do, I was I was in under under the gun trying to get it done. And the welds really suck on this coating. This is a probably a sixteenth of an inch thick rubber coating. And I just had to sand it away and burn them on here the best I could. And this is some more tubing right here that I welded little pieces of flat bar to. And then I just uh, through bolted them. It's a long way from perfect, but it is fully adjustable. I can slide these rails anywhere I need to up and down the, the bars. And when I first when I first built these bars, I just bent the little turn downs on the end of the rail. And it, uh, it didn't match very good at all because the roof is actually curved. So I've had to pull them back off and I rolled them in a tube roller with just, uh, I mean, barely anything, just the smallest little radius to kind of curve that. And uh, that's basically it. You know, it's, it uses all the, the factory mounting points. I did drill those out and weld in some quarter 20 uh, weld nuts or, or some weld washers, something like that. Now, if you watch my table build video, they're, they're the same thing. They're quarter 20. I, I used them in that. So, but it uses all the factory holes. And uh, not a whole lot to it. it. Works great. I've, I've had a lot of weight up there. Pretty basic. Uh, I think it looks really good. Kind of looks like a rock slider. Uh, I'm 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 real happy with it. So we just got back from Easter Jeep Safari in Moab, and on the way back on I-80, about in Reno, my um, shock tower, my my ghetto shock tower that I built for Moab uh, last year, it actually fell off the Jeep on the highway. Well, it didn't come completely off, but it sheared the shocks sheared off and they were bouncing around smashing the tub And so I, from last year I had these brand new 10 inch travel rough country shocks and they were way too big But when I got back to the shop in Sacramento Greg and I just came up with something just to slap them on there uh, So the shock towers on the bottom of my axle right now are really low to the ground. That's not long term. That was just uh, something we had to do um, but what I want to talk about back here are all the rough stuff parts uh, starting with the brakes the brakes were pretty controversial this rough stuff disc brake conversion i had to then these brackets to get them to fit and then since then i believe rough stuff has actually updated the design um, but a lot of you guys were saying how how uh, crappy these were going to be and that they're just auto zone parts this and that well wherever they get them from i i don't know but i can tell you these brakes have been on here for 12 months almost 20,000 miles and they work really freaking good. I'm super impressed with uh, with everything. The calipers, the rotors are fine. Uh, all the hardware they came with, these soft lines. 
everything's holding up great and they, they work really good. Uh, sincerely, my brakes now, after uh, lifting the vehicle and swapping these axles in, my brakes work better than they ever did stock. They work really good. Uh, that being said, they are biased to the rear and um, I need to put in a proportioning valve. If I have a lot of weight in the Jeep, it's actually really nice. Um, the brakes seem to be pretty, pretty well set up. Um, but when the Jeep is empty and I don't have any gear in it, if I stab the brake pedal, I can definitely lock up the rear tires uh, on pavement, not a problem. The times I have locked it up though, it's interesting to look at the skids because they, they both lock up uh, exactly the same time. So these brakes work exactly the same left to right, which is, which is nice. Um, this truss on the four nine inch axles, a rough stuff part, it's not, I mean, it's just metal. It's not really anything that can go wrong there, but that's obviously held up fine. It's not cracking off or anything. As far as I know, my axle's still straight. Um, and so that's fine there. Um, it's got a few leaks. So that's, that has nothing to do with rough stuff. All right. So here's the rear drive line. This is a rough country drive shaft. This is actually the front drive shaft for a uh, Jeep JK aftermarket drive line for a lifted Jeep JK for the front and uh, it works freaking great I'm I'm actually super impressed with this drive line from rough country uh, it showed up and uh, fit really good the U joints on it were made in the USA I believe I don't know who makes their shafts for them or if they make them in-house I don't know but they're uh, they're made in the USA as well and after the Utah trip, I did change the U-joint out on it, but that was after a week of wheeling in Moab and uh, almost 20,000, well on this one, maybe 18,000 miles on this drive line, and uh, no issues with that at all. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked on that. That definitely works good. Um, the uh, leaf springs, these are rough country as well. It's a little bit tough to see, but as you can, as you can tell by looking down that, they are still arced. They haven't really worn out at all, actually. And that is fairly surprising to me. Um, reading comments and forums, a lot of people talk about how crappy the rough country leaf springs are. And that that's going to be the theme of a lot of this review is, you know, I read so much stuff online. And uh, a lot of what I read online, it just simply has not been my experience. Uh, the Jeep is not sagging at all. Let's go out and take a look at it, actually. All right, so if you've been following along with the Project Green Machine playlist, uh, you will know that I ordered a three and a half inch leaf spring for the rear and three and a half inch coils for the front um, for the first Moab trip that we did with this Jeep. Uh, immediately after that, I, I actually upgraded to uh, four and a half inch coil springs up front after that trip, but I kept the same three and a half leafs in the rear. And as you can see, the front is a little bit higher, but that's a four and a half inch spring and this is the three and a half inch spring. It, I can't really see that it's settled at all after uh, 12 months of driving and two wheeling trips in Moab and wheeling here in Oregon uh, throughout. It's basically right where it was at. Uh, I still have the stock shackles on there. The ride is a little stiff, kind of rides like a pickup unless I have weight in it. Um, it's just the way it is. So maybe some longer shackles or some improved shackle angle, maybe a slider box, I don't know, something like that might help the ride. But as far as the leaf spring just uh, immediately wearing out, like a lot of people were saying, that just hasn't happened. While we're talking about rough country, let's take a look at the front shocks here real quick. Uh, these have been on here since the beginning after lifting the Jeep. They're 10 inch travel. Uh, I forget what they call them. I think they're the 2.0s, something like that. I'll put a link to everything I'm discussing uh, in the description below if you're interested. Uh, they, they ride just fine. They rode great when they were new, and now that they have about 20,000 miles on them and 12 or 13 months, uh, they still ride pretty good. No issues there. The uh, stainless steel extended drive, or ex excuse me, stainless steel extended brake line, this is a rough country part as well. Uh, no issues there. No issues at all. All right. Let's see. There might be a few other, if I'm forgetting anything, I apologize. But um, let's talk about the winch. Look at this thing. Look at the color of that. Now this, this has definitely gone downhill, this winch from Rough Country. It, the funny thing is it, it actually works just fine, but I could not believe how much the anodization faded. I swear to you, this was jet black. That being said, it, it works fine. I've used it quite a bit. I've towed 
Uh, full runner in the snow. I actually ended up towing out a guy who was stuck in a Duramax. This is their 12,000 pound winch with the synthetic line. Um, the line is held up fine. The winch works great. But after being outside for one summer, the, the red line is basically uh, pink. It, <laughs> they really need to work on their UV protectiveness, that's for sure. Uh, but like I said, I, I've used it a lot and it, it works perfectly fine. Now, if, if you built a bumper that this, if you got a bumper or built a bumper that housed the winch in it and it was a little more protected from the elements, I'd expect it to hold up fine. But it has definitely faded um, a lot in 12 months. The front bumper of my Jeep is a Victory bumper. They are not available though anymore. It looks like they decided to only make them for Toyotas. Uh, so I have probably one of the few Victory bumpers and the end caps um, bolt on and off. I have, I had to take them off, uh, well, a year ago in Moab because they were hitting the tires and I just never put them back on. So looks kind of funny to some people. Eh, I don't care. Works fine. Doesn't protect the front corners very good, but uh, if I bolted my corners back on with a little trimming to them, uh, should be should be fine. But anyway, I'm going to do something different here in the future with the bumper. Uh, the rock sliders, they are made out of some some rusty old DOM that I got for free from Buddy. They are 1.75, so one and three quarter inch DOM, uh, 120 wall. They work really good. This is a, I don't know if it's my own design. I kind of just did it. <laughs> Didn't put a whole lot of design thought into it, but they work really good. I have these pop outs on there. So if you're rubbing against a tree or a rock and going forward, it'll kind of just pop you out uh, right to the back tire there. And then it doubles as a step, which works really good. So you can just step right here and then uh, reach up and grab the roof rail. And that way you can tie stuff on or ratchet strap down your load, whatever you're doing. Works pretty good. Um, they are really secure, actually. They bolt to the pinch seam all the way down the whole length of the Jeep with uh, five bolts. And then they also uh, just bolt to the unibody. And I don't have a frame stiffener on here or anything. Um, but because of the pinch seam, which you can't see, but right behind us there, and then just these few bolts, I actually neglected to bolt the middle one here. Last time I had these off, and it looks like I got one bolt in the back, but whatever. Uh, even so, they are super secure. Because of the pinch seam, it kind of creates a, um, a wedge going up or down. So these things, they just absolutely do not move, whether you're hitting rocks upward or stepping on them going down and uh, they're just spray painted. I cleaned the metal and spray painted them with some Rust-Oleum. I like the, I think they call it Painter's Touch 2X. I don't know, it's pretty cheap, but it, this, I've not retouched these in a year. And um, I mean, of course it's, you know, it's scraped off here and there where I step on it all the time, but it's easy to touch up because it is spray paint and they, they look perfectly fine. So anyway, so the roof rack and the sliders are custom uh, as is the links and the suspension but that's all uh, that's all rough stuff and rock and road parts but let's uh, go ahead and get down there here and take a look so basically if you're not familiar with rough stuff which I would be surprised if you're not but they sell kits and basically you just buy all the parts so you get rod ends and heim joints if you're doing links and whatever and they give you enough length of DOM and parts to make something work. So they, this is a Y-Link, Rough Stuff's Y-Link uh, GM one-ton steering setup. I went over the knuckle with it and I had their cure on here for um, about 11 months. And then they, they just came out with these. Instead of a cure on one side, you're supposed to put the cure right here. I had been running it here. But instead of a cure, um, we are running, I don't even know what they call these yet, but if they're on their website, they may not be. But if they are, I'll put a link below, of course. Um, anyway, running one there and one over there. They work just fine. It steers just like it did with the Cure. Steers great. You may notice I do not have a steering stabilizer on here. I haven't for 20,000 miles. I don't have any steering issues, wandering issues, no bump steer, nothing like that at all. And uh, that a lot of that is due to the geometry that, that uh, Greg at Rock and Road helped me with. And you can see the drag link and the track bar or pan hard bar are exactly the same angle and exactly the same length. And that's why there isn't any bump steer. It, it works really, really good. Um, so back to the rough stuff part. So this is a rough stuff diff cover 
I think they're three-eighths of an inch thick. They're, they are ridiculously beefy. I haven't really hit it uh, front on yet, but I have hit the bottom of it a lot. I've actually gotten the Jeep stuck on it. Uh, it's not leaking and nothing. It works really good. Um, these are all their tubes. This is what, one and a half inches around, but it's quarter wall DOM. All the steering, the drag length, pan hard bar, all that stuff, super beefy. Uh, I went with the one and a quarter Himes. They're really freaking big. Really beefy. Uh, some people say that the rough stuff Himes come brand new worn out. <laughs> That's not the case at all. Let me go to the other side. All right, so I'm on the other side of the, the axle here. And this Heim, I can't, there's, it's not worn out. There's absolutely no play in it at all. And uh, these have been through two summer no one full summer it was 110 degrees two wheeling trips to moab a complete winter outside in oregon exposed to the elements they're not rusty they're not loose they don't squeak i i do hit them with wd-40 i don't know if that's right or wrong every once in a while i hit them with wd-40 i have what one two three four five six on my three link uh to be honest with you there is one it's the rear heim this one right here on top, the rear heim on the uh, the third link of the axle, for whatever reason, the the nylon liner in this one um, is loose just a little bit. It doesn't make any noise. I wouldn't have even been able to tell, uh, except for we with uh, Greg, we just upgraded the ends of my cross member after the last Moab trip, and we had to unbolt that, and we noticed it was a little bit loose. I haven't even talked to Rough Stuff about it, though. Um, but out of the, I'm not even sure how many I have here, but let's see, one, two, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 Himes. One of them is a little bit loose. So it could be just be a fluke. I don't know, but I haven't had any issue. So my entire front axle being a three link is linked to this cross member available from Rock and Road Performance. Now these ends that we just upgraded to, I, I don't know if you recall, but I had my Himes like down here. For the first moab trip they hung down super low and the ends on this cross member were never meant to have the tabs and the himes down low like that but it was a time crunch issue and that's just what we were what we had to do to make it all work um but before the last moab trip about a month ago that we did to uh, easter jeep safari 2018 we upgraded these ends on rock and roads modular um, cross member here and they are really working good What's nice about it is they bolt onto the unibody rail and then you can actually drop the, um, the transmission, the whole drivetrain out of here if you need to because the center section of that cross member comes out and then your links will remain on the ends which, are, which is bolted to the unibody so your whole front axle will stay in place. So here's a side profile of the back of the, the cross member here. And um, this, like I said, I don't have any unibody stiffener on here or, or anything. And those ends are just bolted on with the factory stud in the front and then the factory uh, bolt in the rear. And it did not move at all with the entire front axle going to the cross member. Um, the way it's set up here, it did not shift, it did not move. Now, ideally, I would like to have unibody stiffeners. Uh, just to make it a little beefier right there and then maybe I'd weld the cross member ends on or at least they'd have something a little thicker to bolt to. That being said, just bolted to the factory holes there, the uh, Rock and Road cross member absolutely did not move and held up really well in Moab. Uh, some of you guys are asking where to get these from. They are available. You just need to get in touch with Greg at Rock and Road and I will put his email address in the description below. That's probably the best way to get in touch with them. More from Rock and Road are these rock rings. These are, are really nice. They help stiffen the rim. They kind of act like a, a wheel stiffener if you're running low PSI and you hit a rock, the, the wheel won't bend. Uh, they also, if I can find it, where to go? Also, they protect the valve stem, which is tucked away in there. And it's not a big deal. You can just bend it out if you need to fill it up with air. It works fine. But if you're rubbing on rocks and stuff like that, they, they really protect it well. And honestly, I haven't touched them a whole lot, even wheeling in Moab. I think I scraped one of them somewhere. These are available for different size steel wheels, and you just weld them on yourself. 
I have a whole video on this. These are, I think, the cheapest steel wheels you can get from Summit Racing. I bought those. I got these rock rings from Greg, and uh, I just welded them right here to the wheel and sanded it, de-ate it. And again, that rust oleum spray paint, um, no touch up at all in a year, still, still looks just fine. And that brings us to something else. Let's talk about these tires. All right, so these are the dreaded retreads, people are calling them, from Treadrite. And they're actually a remold, meaning from one bead, this side all the way across the tread, the other side is all uh, remolded, so it's not technically a retread. And uh, if you guys watched those, um, those videos, I slashed these things right out of the gate. I drove from Sacramento, where I mounted them, out to Moab, and I didn't have my bump stops at the time set up right, I thought I did and I actually sliced these all the way through the lugs, which were brand new, into the carcass of the tire. And uh, the tires at that point were basically not safe to drive on. They were pretty much pretty much destroyed. So I ended up getting a new set of these remolded tires, the same ones. And when they arrived, I thought, well, I don't really want to swap them out. I think I'll just run these a little bit longer and then swap the new ones on. No sense in wearing them down if these were still working even though i had cut all of them well time went on and i never swapped them out i still have a brand new set of five of these things down at rock and road and um, coming up on 20,000 miles on these tires on these mud terrains several trips to utah wheeling in moab and actually aired down this last time to about uh, less than 15 pounds about i think uh, 12 pounds what i went down to squishing these things out nice and soft, driving around at 12 PSI, even on the interstate for a week, uh, going in between trails in uh, Moab, no issues with them at all. So I, I have put in uh, tire bouncing beads. I had lead weights on here when we first bounced them, but after I, I'm not sure if I can find it, but on one of the tires, must be on the rear now, on one of the tires I ripped out a whole section of, of uh, tread where it was contacting the body the first time out and the lead weights just weren't really able to keep up with that anymore and they became out of bounds so I bought some ceramic tire bouncing beads off Amazon loaded these things up and they are not bad at all there's still a couple little vibrations but I can't really say it's a fault of the tire uh, because they're missing they're missing a lot of tread uh, in random places I can't find it right now but I'll put a picture up of it oh stuff like this that's a whole section of the lug missing from, from a high RPM screwing around on dirt roads and stuff like that. But anyways, um, I drive them pretty much every day, uh, no issues at all. And like I said, once these are worn out, I got a brand new set of these that, that'll be going right back on. So one of the newest upgrades on the Jeep uh, is this bump stop. Greg basically came up with this. I may have helped with some aspect of it, but basically it was, it's all Greg's design uh, from Rock and Road. And Rock and Road, what, what they're all about is one-off custom stuff. That's, that's what Greg loves to do. He doesn't like repetition and making the same thing over and over again. So that, uh, that rubber bump stop on there is available from Rough Stuff Specialties. But then all the steel work, all the, the bracketry up here, this is all from, from Rock and Road. And this bump stop tower, or bump stop shock tower, call it whatever you want, doesn't have a name. It uses the factory sway bar holes right there. And then is a tube welds onto the inside of that goes underneath the exhaust with a polite little bend over to the other side and then the shocks they mount right to that tube as well and it's really freaking trick really clean it doesn't take up any room in here the axle still has full travel up and down it works really good and i'm super stoked to have really good nice bump stops uh, in the back so it's a, a big shout out to rock and road there that, this thing's awesome works great well, if I'm forgetting something, which I very well might be, I apologize, but that's that's basically the majority of it. My Jeep is pretty simple. There's not a whole lot going on, and I like it that way. Um, these are the stock gears out of the truck, so they're, they're 410, uh, well, what, 411 rear, 409 front, I don't know, whatever Ford did. They did some weird mixed matched gear sets like that. For all intensive purposes, they're 410 gears. Uh, it has the Ford Limited slip in the rear, which is completely worn out, so it's basically open diff. Lockers in the future uh, are high on my priority list for sure. Um, so uh, something coming up that uh, I'm really looking forward to is the Panama City 
Jeep Beach Jam out in Florida. I've never been to Florida. It's coming up right here in the middle of, of May. I'm gonna put exact dates down below in the description, so, so be sure to check that out. I'm gonna be there. I'm flying out to Florida. Like I said, I've never been, and we're gonna have a, a meet and greet. Uh, my understanding is for the first time, they got permits to actually drive on the beach out there in Florida, which we do here all the time in Oregon, by the way, but I guess it's a big deal out there. Uh, sounds like a lot of fun. The Command Sheep is gonna be there, so if you guys wanna see that in person, that's Matt's Command Sheep build. Uh, be sure to come out and check it out. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and I look forward to meeting you. And uh, come on by and say hi. All right, guys, that's going to be it. Be sure to check the description below for any information that uh, you need to know. We'll see you in the next video.